A world premiere is a big deal for any composer. It's a chance to have your music played live for people. It's a chance to get it recorded. You know, success leads to success. And depending on how you leverage this world premiere, that can lead to future opportunities, whether it's, you know, future performances of the same work or commissions for new works or new possibilities for submitting your music to different competitions. The chance to cultivate lasting relationships with collaborators. World premieres are a big deal. Don't underestimate them. There's a lot that goes into making a world premiere premiere something that can really boost your career and really help you get the next gig. My name is David Vess, I'm a composer, and this is a video about how to have a successful world premiere. So before I go too far down the rabbit hole here, I need to acknowledge that all the things that I'm going to say in here are not always going to be possible. Like number one, if you can't physically be at the premiere, well then... <laughs> Many of these things are going to be kind of hard to do and you know that's okay that's a great situation to be in some group is playing your piece of music you know somewhere else in the world and you literally just can't be there that's not a bad scenario so this is a list really for when you get to be there and how you can make the most out of it when you are physically present this is just a collection of things that I have learned that have really helped me move things forward and so I hope that they help you as best you can you want to go to every rehearsal that is possible for you to go to you need to bring your score you need to be able to answer questions about it as as the rehearsal goes along. I actually made a whole video about this, so I'll have that linked below. Your goal is to provide solutions and be easy to work with. If you can, after or before the rehearsal, talk to the performers, talk to the conductor, be gracious. Hey, you know, that solo sounds amazing. You know, thank you so much. Gratitude goes a really long way. And remember, part of this is to show that you're easy to work with, that you're someone that people want to work with and want, you know, that is excited to be there. A successful career means having cultivated many relationships with all kinds of collaborators. So, I mean, it, it's crucial that you approach everyone with appreciation. Avoid generic things like saying, good job. It's like, that's basically like saying like, you were there. It's fine, but see if you can find something specific. Obviously, this isn't going to work for everyone. Like, you're not going to notice every single person, but let's say you're watching the group and you really see, man, that bassoon player is just like really getting into this and really tearing it up. I'm going to go tell them. I'm going to say, hey, you sound awesome. Like, I'm really loving watching you play. That kind of specific thing makes them feel seen and heard, and that that's the special sauce. You want to do that. If someone came up to you, let's say you had a premiere and someone came up to you and they're like, wow, you know, your music, that was such a beautiful piece. I loved how you had that alto part take over at that really critical moment later on and da 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 da. And they noticed a detail. You'd probably feel a lot better than someone being like, good job. It's not bad. It's just it could be more. And you want to be someone who offers a little bit more where you can. Specific thanks, specific gratitude. That's the way to go. Now, part of this is that it's kind of awkward. It's, it's awkward. It's awkward to talk with people after a rehearsal or before or whatever. And you know what? never goes away. It's just, it's just, hey, it's part, it's what's for dinner. It's part of the deal. It sucks, but you get used to it. It's never not going to be awkward, but you should still find a way to be appreciative and say thank you and show up and just go talk with them. I know you probably don't want to go talk to the, with the conductor. You should absolutely go thank the conductor. The more that you do it, the easier it'll get. It's like diving in a pool. The water's cold. You de It's shocking. It doesn't feel good. It's not comfortable. But once you do it for like five minutes, you forget and then you get used to it. So just know that you will get there, dive in the pool, do it, don't not do it. During the rehearsals, if possible, get a little snapshot of, of the rehearsal itself. Like take, take a video or take a picture or something. You know, you want to post it to your social media accounts, whatever you use. That's an important part of the proof of concept. It can be a little weird when you're like, I'm a composer, and then someone looks you up and there's like three posts. It's just like your cat or something. You want to show, I, I'm doing the thing. I'm, I'm being a composer. I'm showing that I'm doing this. It's an important thing to do. So I, I sympathize if you dislike it and you don't want to do it. I understand, but it is an important part of the proof of concept. If you learn anything from me ever at all in these videos that I make, be it this, you're going to record the dress rehearsal. You should record the dress rehearsal. The dress rehearsal is always going to be like the best opportunity for the recording. This is usually the first time that the group is going to get together that day. They are primed, they are ready to go, and they don't have an audience. They don't have any fear of making mistakes. So usually they really go for it. Oftentimes in the concert, a group, especially if it's a student group, 
might come up a little more conservative, a little more, eh, I'm not so sure. Does, is, is, does he come in on B1? Does he come in on B2? There's little hesitancies that pop up in everyone's mind when it's like the gig, whereas that doesn't happen usually in the dress rehearsal. And also there's no audience. So there's no like, <coughs> just old man coughing in like the quietest part of the piece because, you know, it, it record the dress rehearsal. That's, that's the best thing. When you arrive at the premiere, you're gonna get a program. You're gonna get that program. It's very, very important. During the world premiere, take your phone and record the performance. Like, let, have it literally sitting in your lap and record it. Now, that sounds kind of silly, but you might be surprised at how good the recording can turn out to be. Uh, one of my best score videos is it's a choir piece, and I literally just had it, like, had my phone in my lap during the performance, and it's the one that I ran with. It's, 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 a, it's a solid recording. Now, that piece of practical advice comes from an amazing composer and mentor, uh, Sidney Guillaume. He's, he's a fantastic choral composer. I, I've linked his stuff below. You should definitely check him out. He gave me that piece of advice that's not original to me, but I'm sharing it because it's it's just good advice. So check his stuff out. He's super great. Now the reason this is so crucial is because organizations and performers do not always prioritize getting you the recording. It's a thing that sucks. They have other things that are going on. You are usually a small part <laughs> of the operation, right? Like, oh my piece is being played. It's like, yeah, you're one of like six or seven pieces that are going on. Maybe there could be even more. And they've got just other things to think about. They're probably thinking about other gigs. They have other things that they have to organize. Getting the recording to you is probably not gonna be a priority, but you still need to have that recording. The recording is essential. A piece kind of isn't finished. You know, even if you have the score and you have the parts, and even if you get it performed, if you don't have a recording, did it happen? It sucks, but that's, that's an important thing. That's how you prevent that. You record the dress rehearsal and you record in the concert. During the concert itself, whether you, you know, whenever you get played or whatever, you know, you're probably not gonna be the only thing that is going on there. And it is really important to be willing to talk with people during the break. The reason that this is important is that one, if there are other composers that are there, you should go and congratulate them. And just like I said before with performers, you should take the time to listen to their music and find something that you can appreciate about it and tell them, you know, be specific. You don't have to love their work. You don't even have to like it, but you can find something in it that was good, that's admirable. Be the audience member that you wanna have. It creates a good energy for you and you just you want that you want to be that person you may get approached by some random person at the thing that's going to talk with you oh i love your piece and blah 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 and the reason i say this is important to not skip that is that you never know who is on the board of whatever and is looking for a composer to do something new for their you know 75th anniversary concert or you know what whatever the thing is you never know who could be a future patron or a future collaborator even if they are not a performer it's always worth treating everyone with respect treating everyone with kindness you never know where an ally is going to pop up also if you haven't already you should definitely pick up that program don't forget that, get the program, don't forget. After the premiere, ideally there's gonna be a little bit of celebrating and getting to spend time congratulating the performers and thanking the conductor if possible. Uh, and you should do that, you should enjoy the milestone, you should have fun uh, you know, hanging out with people and talking with everyone. The next day, you're gonna send everyone a thank you email. It doesn't need to be long, it does not need to be a novel, just you know, short and sweet with gratitude. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. This is, you know, this is such a fantastic performance and I really appreciate all your hard work. Thanks for bringing my music to life. See you later. If you were able to get pictures, if you were able to get video during the performance, you should post that to social media if you haven't already. You should tag people. You should get as many people involved with it as possible. It's an important part of the proof of concept. Before you move on to the next project that you're you know, gonna work on or write or whatever is going to go on, you should take some time to make some small edits to your piece. Think about during the rehearsal. Was there a, was there a section that the conductor kept having to say like, okay, be quiet. Like, okay, we need, we need it quieter here. We need it quieter here. And and you had like mezzo piano or something and it was always needing to be pushed you know quieter consider changing the dynamic did the conductor constantly want to start at measure 47 and there was no rehearsal mark put a rehearsal mark there the conductor did a retard here and i actually liked how it sounded add it in it could be like a part where they really need a reminder to stay loud and keep the energy up you might add the dynamic in i only recommend doing this with small changes you can do what you want but i don't think it's a great idea after you've had a performance to go back and drastically change the piece set it up for success for the next performance that you're going to have if you just notice a couple of consistent things of that just go ahead and make the change now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make a score video of your piece and this is very simple if you took the time to record it and you have a version of the piece 
piece that is decent to run. Uh, you don't want to put something that's like not not solid. Uh, you know that isn't a good run that doesn't represent the piece. Like if it's a, from just a rehearsal and there's like a massive crash, it's it's not worth including. But if you get a good run, go ahead and take it, make a score video. I'll show you how to do it. It's incredibly easy. It's incredibly simple. You're literally going to go in your computer and you're going to go to the PDF that you use to make the score. And assuming you've already done all the things that you need to make this, you know, the score look good. Hey, I made a video about that too. Posted it down below. You're going to literally take a snapshot of the thing itself. Make sure to leave plenty of room around the border. You don't want it super tight. If you're using like a large ensemble score, like let's say it's like wind ensemble or orchestra or something like that, I will hide as many staves as I can. On the piece of paper, it's going to look super illogical, but don't worry about that because that'll make the detail more clear for the video. It doesn't take very long. You're just going to snapshot every single page and then you follow along in the recording and you add the next page as needed. And then you post it to YouTube and then people can interact with it. And so people like who sing in choir can go sing along with it and they might be like hey you know tell my choir director I found this piece and uh, I really like it can we do it and then they might contact you to purchase it that's an it's an essential way for people to engage with your music so that's why getting that recording is so important and that's why having the score really well set in the first place is you know really good don't be intimidated by by, by this don't be intimidated by it. just do it I wish I had done this forever ago I thought it was way more complicated than it is and it's not so do it post it to YouTube uh, with a score video and if you want to do just the audio post that on SoundCloud or some other comparable thing if you haven't done so already you're gonna want to register the work for royalties remember that program that you should not have forgotten and you definitely got multiple times, you're gonna use that to report the performance to whatever performing royalty group that you go with. So for instance, I go with BMI. So whenever I have a performance that isn't like a student thing, you know, that's like with a professional group or, you know, that has a presenter, I send it and I get a little bit of money back depending on the length of the piece and the type of forces that we're using. And it adds up. It's a little bit of extra change and hey, you know, it's free money. I mean, essentially all you gotta do is just send the program. So don't forget the program. <laughs> the last thing that I would say with this is to enjoy the milestone. Every piece is an accomplishment. It's so easy to forget that when everything is super busy and you've got to turn right around and maybe you, you know, in school and you have another class you got to go to or you have another project, you have all these other things that are going on, but bask in the moment for a minute to just say, hey, actually I did this and it's done and that is a very cool thing. Enjoy the victory, you know? Uh, it, it's amazing how all the music can add up over time. You know, it's easy to get into it and be writing a bunch and not realize like, wow, I've written like, you know, several pieces this year. We're all building a big quilt of music, uh, you know, one square at a time, one piece at a time. Our whole life is a, it's just a big collection of all these, you know, these pieces together and each square matters. You don't get to have your best, biggest, most important pieces without the little ones in between. When we think about like Beethoven, okay, Beethoven, you, you can boil Beethoven down to like five pieces, right? Like Symphony Number no. 5 and 9 and 3 and the Moonlight Sonata and what, whatever piece, top 10, whatever. But he wrote over 600 pieces. And that's not even really counting movements, which would probably pff, double or triple that number. It's important to keep that perspective, that every piece matters. It does lead up, even if it isn't the greatest thing that you're ever gonna write. It's an important milestone and you should enjoy it. Because after that, once you finish, once the night is over and the day is over, whatever, it will be time tomorrow to face the blank page again and just start the whole process over again. And it's great. That's why we do this. That's why we're here. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, what was your best world premiere? What made it special? What made it like, ah, oh, this is the moment that we live for? I I'd love to hear it in the comments below, really. I, I, I really would. What, what made it special? And I'd also love to hear any horror stories, like, oh, this went wrong, and oh, I can't believe this happened, and we can learn from what is good and from what is bad. So I'd really appreciate it if you would leave me a comment below. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you. See you next time.